Guess what called two reporters? They claim that they, they well, I heard they're reporters. I don't really know who they are. And asked them to go and pull down, hack into GNN, and take down the story. The criminal investigation department, police headquarters in Leary, and attached to the major crime investigation unit. Today is the 24th of September 2022, and the time now is 19.57 hours. I'm currently in the criminal investigation department video audio interview room, and I intend to conduct a video audio with one Alex Wade in relation to a dead group in a computer system to humiliate a person and also an alleged extortion committed on Afraz Mohammed between the 29th of August 2022 and the 23rd of September 2022. My Skype for this interview will be Detective Constable 24285 Jason and the ramp will be operating with the equipment will be 22567 Richmond. The Ghana government said Rickford Burke conspired. They're trying to wait. To, they're, fine, they're trying hard to get me, right? Ah, let me tie you to this thing. So the police and El Nan Lal Barjak, they and them got together and conspired a criminal conspiracy and say, let me link Rick Ford Borg to this so we could get him. want to thank you for making it this far in the video. But could you please take a few seconds, if you haven't already, to drop us a like. It really helps to promote this content in the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. It costs you nothing. And you'll be able to have a notification every time we drop content like this. Oh yeah. Thanks. Right back into the content. This is America. When I examine G the GNN, it says where the company is registered and all that. And under the United States laws, anybody could publish anything so long as they don't libel anybody. And if they libel you or slander you, there are several laws that you can pursue. But you know what? BM Soot called two reporters, and I the, the way I know this is because of the interviews, which you will see. BM Soot called two reporters. They claim that they, they well, I heard they're reporters. I don't really know who they are. And asked them to go and pull down, hack into GNN, and take down the story on BM Soot. Because as according to the interview that the police conducted here, it's damaging their reputation. And they offered them to pay them monies to do this. Apparently, they couldn't do it. And they said that those men extorted the money. And they linked them to me. Ah, magic. Yeah, let's link Rick Ford to this. How much money did they pay the guys? $150,000 based on what the report in the press said. Which is 700 US dollars. The watch I'm wearing right now is 10,000 US dollars. I'm about to watch. 10,000 US dollars. A hundred and fifty thousand, sorry, 150,000 Ghana dollars is 700 US dollars. The Ghana government said Rickford Burke conspired. They're trying to wait. To, they're, fine, they're trying hard to get me, right? Ah, let me tie you to this thing. So the police and El Nan Lal Barjak, they and them got together and conspired a criminal conspiracy and say, let me link Rick Ford Borg to this so we could get him. This 700 US dollars. 700 US dollars. That's what this whole government of Guyana is spending all this money at Rickford, to get Rickford Burke because he allegedly tried to extort $700 from BMC. They ain't got no shame, you know. Completely false. Based on what I am hearing from the reporters, and you will hear in 60 seconds, BMC, again, called them to commit a crime 
espionage in the United against the United States, break into an American company and take down their content from their website. That's what the Chinese do. And they get charged with espionage. But the guy in the police, and, and listen, they're so stupid. They sent their security surveillance in their office, the tape to the police. And you know what? The police try to keep it secret. But Guyana police force officers leaked it to us. So we have a video with them sitting down there trying to hack into this American company. They claim I own it. But after the men couldn't do it, they call it extortion and try to link me to it. Not one person in these interviews, I will show you a series of them, said anything about me. In one of the interviews, the police officer interviewing the, the, the two men asked these guys, this money that this man was supposed to pay you was Doran Best supposed to get any? He said, no. The guy offered the money to pay us. And listen, BM Search really got balls. The effrontery. They told the guys, we will pay you now to go on their website and put up nice stories about us, BM Soda. We are a very nice charitable company. So not only do they want to destroy the, this American company's website, GNN, they want to take it over to put up nice stories about BM Soda. Listen to the interview. And at the back end of the interview, it's about 40 minutes, I'll come back and conclude. want to thank you for making it this far in the video but could you please take a few seconds if you haven't already to drop us a like it really helps to promote this content in the algorithm and if you haven't subscribed already hit the subscribe button it costs you nothing and you'll be able to have a notification every time we drop content like this i'll wait thanks Right back into the content. I will now have four friends to use themselves to the camera, starting with Constable Richmond. Hi, my name is Constable Richmond. Detective Constable, stationed in the criminal investigation department, attached to the crime lab. I'm the one operating this device. Thank you. Very I'm Christopher Soon, Detective Council 24285, stationed at the Criminal Investigation Department headquarters in Leary, and attached to the Major Crime Investigations Unit. For this interview, I'll be described. Okay, thank you, Constable Casey, now Constable Richmond. I will now have the subject, Alex Wade, be escorted into the interview room. Yeah, Over to my left here is Constable Kisslin, and he'll be describing this interview. 
from time to time you see MV making notes, you don't get distracted by that. Okay. That's it. So if you have any clarification questions you would like to ask to yes. during or after this interview, yeah. you may be able to do so. Yes. So my extreme right here is for well, Richmond. You be the rock operating the video equipment. Yes. I must tell you that this interview will be video audio regardless. As you can see, you got the camera there, right? Yeah. You see the camera there? Yes. yes. The reason for this is you do be a video on your card is to protect both your head. You end the camera and say something you did not like, right? Yes. Right? Yes. If at any time during this interview you would like to use the washroom or anything to eat or drink, just indicate the same to me yes. and I will facilitate the same. Yes. Okay, sir? During this interview, it's important for you to keep your voice up. Yes, sir. The reason being, there's a CY right here and people be traversing back and forth. Sometimes they make a nice with the arms or also play loud music. So it makes it sometimes difficult to hear. So it's important for you to keep your voice up. Yes, sir. Up. Yes, sir. Before we go any further, may I ask you what's your name? My name is Alex Wayne, sir. Alex Wayne? Yes, sir. How old are you, sir? I'm 49 years old, sir. Do you have any call name? No, sir. Hmm. Do you know why you're here today, today, sir? Yes, sir. Why? Well, I was arrested for trying to extract money from Mr. Alfred Mohammed in the company of Gary Eliezer, a former reporter of Kaiser News and also a close confidant of Mr. Gerald Bess. Well, the police must tell you why you're here, right? Yeah. The police are investigating a ledge, using a computer system to humiliate a person, mm -hmm. and also an, an alleged extortion committed on Afras Mohammed, which occurred between the 29th of August 2022 and the 23rd of September 2022. Okay. Right? Yes. There's an allegation level against you at this time. I'm going to read the same to you, dear actor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to caution you without a chance to respond. That's okay, sir? Yes. The allegation level against you that it is alleged, right? Yes. That you go between the 29th of August and the 23rd of September 2022 attempted to extort the sum of $90 million from Asaf Mohammed. And on the 23rd of September 2022, you received a sum of 55000 from Assad Mami by purporting to the said Assad Mami that you would not release any information you have of him to cause any emotional distress. You're not obliged to say anything unless you wish to do so, but whatever you say, be put into writing and given in evidence. Yes. What do you have to say? Yes, sir. So, first, um I would like to refute those allegations and my reason for doing so. Um, I can't remember the exact date in August when I was called by Mr. Darwin Bess. Uh -huh. Why was a police custody? Did anybody Treating you, make use of any violence or promise you anything while you're in custody. Like today, like today. Say if you, if you say this, or be released. If you tell, do this, you know. To be honest with you, I made a call mm -hmm. to pick up my um, daughter who's now running on Regent Street opposite um, Lucky Dog. Mm -hmm. She's there by the stand, mm -hmm. and I made that call to a woman mm -hmm. who I think she knows Mr. Darwin's lawyer. And then I asked the gentleman over there for a call mm -hmm. because I told him my phone was locked up and nobody knows where I am. And then Kaiser was waiting for me on, on articles and so on, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I made the call, I, he gave me the phone to talk and I spoke with her. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of minutes after, I think the gentleman's phone rang mm -hmm. and some Miss Joseph mm -hmm. called, right? She didn't talk to me, but the gentleman I thought to say, I know Miss Joseph. And I could recall at the time, and he said that the person said to conduct myself. Oh. And I didn't understand what that was. Because oh. that couple minutes after, I reflected the only Miss Joseph I don't know is Holy Joseph. 
which is Mr. Bess's secretary, because I once worked for him as his public oh. relations manager. Okay. And that is, I just tie in there because I don't know of no other Mr. Mm -hmm. Joseph. Do you have any complaint at this time? Do you have any complaint against any of the police at this time? Police may treat you in any way or anything. You have any complaint against any police or any mistreatment or anything? Or any other complaints? Actually, no. Alright. Do you mind telling me where do you live? I live at that part too, and my own is close to that. Who do you live at that part? You live back by yourself? Yes, sir. And how long have you been living at this address? That's like over a year, maybe like a year, four months to live, uh, maybe a few weeks. Do you have any children? Yes, sir. How many? Five. Five? Yes. How many girls? How many girls? Three girls, two boys. Girls, two boys. Yeah. What kind of work you do? I'm a freelance journalist with Fashion News, also with the Times, Times, so my present permanent occupation is the manager of Diamond Optical Games, for the purpose of the law. Can you mind telling me what level of education you would have received? Graduated university, regional occupation health and safety. I also have a 5 CFC general proficiency at Great School. I am so all the whole of a first year and certificate. Okay. Just take the time, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, I just want you to, to, to relate everything with the transpired yeah. relations in the I story know. between the 29th of August leading up to the 23rd yes, of September, leading straight to your rest, right? Yes, sir. Just take the time, everything is important and just. Alright, so when Mr. Gates best called, like I told you, I don't remember the exact date that he called me. I was home in um, under my pony, and he said to me that he needed to see me when I was several times with him since last year. Of the fact that he owes me, I think, 1.2 something million salary, which he never paid because the city government took away his operational license to him for it. So, like every other employee, I left. Angry as ever. So he would call me down and make promises to pay and pay, which never happened. So you can imagine the frustration. I went anyway, and he said I went to his home in Lucas Place. And he said that, um, he said Mr. DM Soot is trying to rob him. And he said that um, while he was in jail, and he was jailed by Senasi, which is a part of the director of his uh, company, that Mr. VM sold and over thirty million dollars to a guy called Roy, which every employee of Darwin was a close confidant of Darwin, confidant of Darwin. And he said he owed Mr. Afras only three million dollars. And so the three million dollars he borrowed three million dollars from Mr. Afras and he would have found the thing his range road from a vehicle that he has. But he also said when he tried to get back the $30 million, Mr. Alfred's held on to this um, the ranger fund doesn't want to give it back to him. He said that he has incriminating um, information about Mr. Alfred's and he wanted to do an article about Mr. Alfred's. He told me to call Mr. Alfred's to ask if he have anything to say about allegations of um, him fraudulently accessing vehicles so Guyana, with all the regular um, stipulated taxes and everything. To be honest with you, I don't know if this should be a part of the interview. I did not do it because I'm like we am with him. And I swear that I come on Mr. Afras so Mr. Afras. My name is Alex Wayne. I'm an ex-employee of Darwin. And he's trying to frame you. And this is how he's trying to frame, frame you. Mr. Afras said to me that he has no information that Darwin is lying. And that was the end of our conversation. He never asked me if the story is going to be published. I said, I don't publish things to Gary. So for Darwin, Darwin's articles are published by Gary Eliezer, who works with him on a casual basis. I thought that's the guy you guys arrested this after the afternoon. By the next morning, the article was on the 
the GNNL site or whatever it was. I did not know that this GNNL site is a site that is owned or maybe created, it's like politically laced by some Mr. Burke, who I'm told is a close friend of Mr. Best. Gary, however, has our password and he's the main writer, which he would have confided, confided in you guys, and which he said to Mr. Muhammad today. He provided a password for the website. He also, the meeting today was because mm -hmm. Mr. Afros has asked me from time to time to see how best I can get it done. So I was at this office, I think, last week, Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I pretended I called from Mr. Afras' phone uh, to Gary and pretended that I wanted to see an article on the website that I don't know how to get on. And the re told me how I can get on. So I said, man, if you want to write something on the website that we could get on, that's when you not knowing that Mr. Arthur's is there. He provided the passwords, the password to check us so we can show you. Mr. Arthur's told me not to go, it was Mr. Arthur's who offered. He asked me what I wanted to make all of this go away. The bad publicity, because he said it was causing business problems with his family because of the DM so name up there. We didn't arrive at an amount or son. He said that he would give me fifty thousand dollars if I can get it off of the site. Right? He didn't give me that money. He gave me five thousand dollars to go. And this was when I met him at his residence somewhere in Happy Acres. He paid a taxi, he sent for the taxi and everything. When I left and I came back I told him that I found out that this website is owned by Burke. And it's the in friend and the person who's writing his theory. So after we finish calling theory and everything, he has been trying since then for me to get theory to come to meet him for a meeting, which we're successful today. He spoke to theory back and forth. They were speaking since the before yesterday, back and forth. They made their arrangements. The arrangements was made for a taxi, which missed the uh, first call. One of his taxi guys, like he would normally call to drop me home and drop me to town or wherever after our meetings. And the taxi dropped us here. Gary went, they talked, the two of them were in conversation, really not me. And yet tell Gary that he wants everything to disappear as well publicity and Gary assured him that he's going to go on the website and delete everything and nothing is going to go back there again. He also assured him that he will do a back backup article, you know, to like to raise the damage but in other words, he's going to do an article to defame Darwin and I think he could because he has Gritty information and dark which I'm not here. I know that. Gary. And so, I was there when Gary gave Gary $50,000. Gary collected the money and counted it. And then, before I left, I said, My yes, now give me my passage. He said, Yeah, man. And give me the $5,000. Gary would have borrowed $10,000 for me to look after his laptop three weeks ago. When he got downstairs, before we reached outside, because he stumbled on the step because he was intoxicated, he said, he said, please, some of money, take all the $10,000 he gave to me. I put it in my pocket, it's a $10,000. I did not collect the money from our friends. I did not have the money dealings with our friends. He wanted Gary, and I delivered Gary. You guys arrested me, I came here, and I said, I'm cooperating all the time, and just a bit amazed and shocked us. The allegation about 30 million dollars is crazy. Let him provide proof. I never tell him no code. He was the person saying, Look, I'll pay you this amount and I'll give you. We were like, I thought this was more like a friend discussion because I assured him I was on his side because I think I wanted to get back a dog for that paying me. So I was willing to go that extent to assist him because I don't know if it's true, but it's very convincing in showing me that. Um, he really doesn't have any money for Darwin. It's Darwin trying to extract. Darwin would have told me also that he signed some arrangement via paper with Mr. Arthur's um, in due residence if you're being forced for it to go away and whatever, saying that he did receive the money, which meant if you do that, you don't have a case. You already signed towards saying that you okay for your guy to collect the money. So if that is true, I was feeling that he was trying to extract money from Mr. Arthur's and that's why I was helping. I don't know what went wrong. I have never taken any money from him. I don't know what went wrong today. If he he didn't believe Gary, I don't know if Gary was faking not to give the um get on the site and did the deal. I was the person insisting that Gary, if you make an arrangement with this man, you want to save him from the embarrassment and the shame. He's a renowned businessman. He lived here now. Gary was saying he could remember the password, so I said, 
there's a forget forgot password feature. If you click it, it would send a code directly either to your email or your phone. And he clicked on it. I think his wife was helping too. She clicked on it, which means the, the code was going forward to Gary, emailing Gary. I don't know if he was failing, but he was giving a lot of difficulties to actually get in to the email and telling the man that when you go home, you're going to do it and all of this kind of things. I think that got Mr. Mohammed man. I even told Mr. Man, do you want me? I offered my laptop, I offered him to charge it up and to do it, but it wasn't charging up fast enough for Mr. Man and said he got stuff to do. I said, do you want me to go to Gary's house, charge it up and stay there and see that it's deleted? Did you have the password and everything? You can check the site to delete it. Any arrangement was between Mr. Mohammed and Mr. Gary. I had no nothing but why the tech talk? How much money is that? 90 million to 30 million dollars for the army. How stupid would he pay me 90 million dollars to prevent him from paying 30 million dollars to the army? Come on. This situation has been building up and building up and building to a climax. Now we know that there was an actual interrogation and persons were questioned in relations to extorting allegedly the Muhammad. So we got to question ourselves and say why then was Burke's name connected to this? Because he's saying he had nothing to do with it. So then why was his name connected to tie him into this? And now we see a whole new case or a whole new situation, a whole new allegation leveled against him in which he is implicated as a person trying to extort $700. $700. $700 is not no money. $700 is a half a week pay at a good job. Two days, three days work sometimes at a good laboring job in the summertime in new york and enough other place so 700 dollars jokey money but then when you listen to the interrogation the interrogation say 90 million but as you could hear the person that's being interrogated say why would a person pay 90 million so they're not going to pay 30 million so some way somebody telling a situation or somebody giving a conversation that don't make sense somebody saying something that is a lie and we're getting closer and closer to what this truth is because remember rick ford was allegedly served with a summons to appear in court so when the case is called, if he doesn't present himself, more than likely, there's going to be papers sent for him to be extradited to Guyana. Now, if he's extradited to Guyana, which might be a possibility, might not be a possibility, but let's have a conversation about what you guys think in the comment section about that. I don't really think that's really much of a possibility, but let's see, because in this time and in this world, you never know. You never know. And you're dealing with a head of state. You're dealing with, you know, persons with real pull and real power in this so-called political world. So you never really know. But what do you guys think? Do you guys think that there's a possibility that an extradition might actually take place? And do you guys think that there's any foundation in truth in this whole matter that's being brought against Mr. Burke? Do you guys think that there's a possibility that he did try to extort the Mohammeds allegedly? Or do you guys think that this conversation and the charges and everything is trumped up and it's just something to get him into Guyana, like he said, so that he can be? unalived let's have a conversation about this in the comment section because this situation right here is getting thick because allegedly 
the FBI is a part of it. Allegedly, the CIA is a part of it. And then we see Mr. Burke is mixing with some of the Congress people of the United States, high-ranking politicians in the United States. So we know that he has a lot of pull on this side as well, allegedly. So then what would be the outcome of a situation like that if papers were sent for him to be extradited and something did allegedly ha happen to him while he was in Guyana? What would be the outcome of a situation like that? You know? Man, this situation right here is one to follow. And we will be bringing every new occurrence, every new step along the way. We will be following this all the way to its conclusion. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.